Good evening, gang. How's everyone doing? Nice and cold and damp and rainy out there, isn't it? Uh, I'm, I'm feeling it, but you know what? I'm praising God that uh, I'm still here. I'm praising God that I've got... Pardon me? That I've got a place to live. That, you know, I've got food, you name it. And that I'm in somewhere where it's nice and warm. But most of all... I praise the Lord for godly legacies that even in the most imperfect people, there's a godly legacy. And I wanted to spend this time with you. First off, if you see the link that's posted here, that was uh, today's sermon from uh, Pastor Greg Laurie of Harvest Church out in Riverside. Uh, I was really blessed by it. And he... Basically, the title of it was A New Beginning for a World Changer. He's doing this uh, World Changer series, and it's really awesome. I've been really blessed with it. Right now, he's been focusing on Moses, but in this area, he was focusing on Exodus chapter 12, where God is discussing, instructing Moses on the Passover itself. And I'm telling you, it really, it really encouraged and challenged me, uh, because if you see through this passage, you see throughout this passage, you see the whole total sacrifice of Christ on for us. And he he made some very interesting uh, comparisons. I was trying to think of the right word. You ever have one of those moments where you're just having a brain fart? I'm having them. I know I'm trying to get sleep. Uh, it's it's getting there. Uh, I think I'm more concerned for my mom right now, in case anybody's wondering. Uh, my father passed away this past Tuesday, so it's kind of weighing on my heart and mind, but I know where he's at. I know that he is in the arms of the Lord, and I know that one day I will see him again, and I look forward to it. It hurts, trust me. I... I had something, you know, I, I always co sort of thought about or envisioned, you know, when this would happen. But when it gets you, when it when it comes, it hits you like a ton of bricks. But I digress. What I encourage you to do is listen to this sermon. Feel free to pause this, listen to the sermon, and then get back. And we can not only discuss that, but also I want to discuss... Uh, some of this morning's devotions with you. You back? What'd you think? It was pretty interesting. It was, it was really powerful. I, I learned a lot from it. That this was a chance for a new beginning. Not just for Moses, but for the people of Israel. And God was issuing his final sort of marching orders before they would leave Egypt. And if you read in this in the book of Exodus, God said that if Pharaoh continued to harden his heart, that God was going to exercise the you know the most you know the ultimate in judgment, which was killing the firstborn. Pardon me. As I said, you know, trying to get sleep. And this was to be a new beginning for Israel. Right in the middle of this year. This particular year, God is giving to Israel a whole new beginning, a new year for them, which more than likely explains uh, the Jewish New Year, Rosh Hashanah. And this is to be a fresh start. And he's instructing Moses on how to go about all of this. And, and I want to read Exodus chapter 15 with you, if possible. So you see what I mean. I mean, excuse me, Exodus chapter 12. You ever, as I said, I'm having one of those days. Duh, duh, duh. But he says here, I'm going to read some of this. He says, And Moses, and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months, and it shall be the first month of the year unto you. To you. So this is the beginning of, Israel, of of the Jewish year. What is the Jewish year? Rosh Hashanah. 
It says, Speak unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And let the ha- and if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it from out from the sheep or from the goats. And ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it upon on the two side posts and on the upper door of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread. And with bitter herbs shall they eat it. Eat not of it raw nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire his head and it, with his legs and with the pertinence thereof. In other words, eat every bit of it. Because it says in verse 10, And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. And it goes on, he goes on to say, You're going to eat this in haste. It says that ye shall eat it with your loins girded, and your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. So basically he's instructing Moses and Aaron on this. This lamb had to be the very best. Why? Because it had to be, as it says, without spot or blemish. It was a representation. It It would be a representation of Jesus Christ. And the lamb had to be slain. It had to be killed. If you read Hebrews 9, verse 22, as uh, Pastor, Pastor Greg was sharing, you see this. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood, there is no remission. In other words, of sins. And you see how God stated the blood needed to be applied. It needed to be applied, as as he says here. And ye shall take, and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper doorpost of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. In other words, they were stating pretty much like this, on, on the side posts, and on the top, and it was a representation of what Christ did. It had to be like this and this, if memory serves. So imagine this. And it says here, when this happens, And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. That's why I posted the verse there that I posted. I really got a lot out of this because I know quite a bit about the Passover. I mean, I don't claim to know everything, but I know that the Passover is a representation of Jesus Christ. And I remember how Pastor Joe of Calvary Chapel of Philadelphia described how they would display the lamb. It's little front hooves like this, it's leggies like this, you know, bound like this. And it was up on a a special type of spike where it would go this way and the other spike would go this way through the lamb. That's what, that's a picture of Christ. And he talks about the fact that this needed to be applied this way. All of this had to be done for this to take effect, for, 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 for protection. Because as he says, I will pass over you. The, another way of Passover is to spread or stand over. As, as you probably heard Pastor Greg saying. Uh, this was, I was having a little bit of issues this mo- uh, while listening to this with Isabella. She decided to clip my ear, little stinker. But this was what I got of it. And I, I also got... 
that this is how this is as I said a type of Christ that this is how when this when this occurred it was representing what Christ did for us and one thing that we can never do when it comes to this is minimize sin that's very dangerous I love how pastor was talking about how people say you know people say when they lie oh I misspoke or when they you know out and out sin you know I, oh, I made a mistake uh, mistake please mistake is an error in judgment you know, when you sin, you sin, excuse me. But he was saying how people find other words for different types of sin. Whether it's a mistake, or I misspoke, or uh, I failed morally, something to that effect when it comes to, a, you know, someone who commits adultery. You know, we never, you know, that's the danger of minimizing sin. And I see so many people doing that. I've seen a lot of pastors, especially as of late, doing that I've seen some pastors that have been caught in some severe sins and they minimize it by using these words they don't call it what it is if they would be like David and say against the only Lord have I sinned in other words if they would use the word sin and acknowledge that they sin and to me when we minimize sin, we run a very big danger of Satan entering and allowing him control of our hearts, allowing him to convince us that we don't, we don't need Christ, that we don't need God in our lives, that we don't need him in control of our lives. And I think also Satan, as, as Pastor Greg was also saying, he loves to be the accuser of the brethren. He loves to tempt us, and when we sin, he just loves to rub it in our faces. And you ever notice, too, that when you confess your sin, and trust me, 1 John 1, 9 is so glorious. I love that song. I love that verse. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I am so glad of that. I am so glad of that. Because I fall on my face and I sin. I screw up. I sin big time, but when I confess my sin to the Lord, he forgives, and I thank God, I praise God for that. And one of the things he was mentioning is sometimes we struggle with something out of our past. We struggle with an issue where maybe somebody sinned against us, and we've responded by sinning in some way. But we've gone to the Lord. We've Maybe if you've lived a life of promiscuity or a life of addiction to drugs, alcohol, or whatever, and you come to know Christ as your Savior and he delivers you from it. But Satan has this wonderful thing of gnawing at you and saying you're still no good. This is where you can apply the blood of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb of God to this, and he promises to forget those sins, to never remember them. And we need to be able to stand tall and say, I am sanctified by the blood of the Lamb. If you read in Revelation 13, something very interesting. I love Revelation. I really truly do. It speaks volumes as to the fact that even in this moment, Christ prevails. It's the only way to describe it. It says here, And I want to make sure I read this. I'm hoping I'm reading the right area. I think maybe it's it's in chapter 12, excuse me. It says here how Satan is now cast out of heaven permanently. And it says here in verse 10 of chapter 12, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. There's coming a day where the devil's going to be kicked out permanently from heaven. He has access to God to accuse us, to make our to, 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 to bring up the past in our face. But Christ is there standing on our behalf saying, well, that person accepted me as their Savior, so that's all taken care of. Forget it. 
And it says here, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. That is such a powerful statement. That is such a powerful statement. That's the tribula uh, that's that's describing the tribulation saints, I believe. Not to get too theological here, but I believe that's what it describes. I believe that everything that we've done, once it's confessed to the Lord, it's forgiven and forgotten. He doesn't remember it. And I'm here to let you guys know that whatever's going on in your life. If you don't know Christ, you can be set free from it. If you accept him as your savior, he loves you so much. He loves you so much that despite the fact he hates sin, he sent his son to die on the cross for you. And he didn't stay dead. Three days later, he rose again. He was the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And this Passover, it signifies the sacrifice that Christ made for us. And it promises some, and once you accept Christ as your Savior, this is what happens. And I want to read a, a really beautiful verse to you out of 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. It states, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. A new creature is a new creation. You've been made new. That's something awesome. And uh, uh, one of the songs that I uh, that I really love um, is a, a song called That Was Then, This Is Now. And I have the link for that on here, and I invite you to listen to it today. But I also want to issue a challenge. Well, first off, I'm reaching out to all those that don't know Christ, because one thing I'm determined to do is to live a godly legacy like my father did. And I'm challenging you. I'm ask, I have a very serious question for all those of you who do not know Christ. If you were to die right now, where, where would you go? That's something pretty potent to think about, huh? If you were right now to stand before God Almighty and he asked you, why should I let you into heaven? Why should I let you into my kingdom? What's your, what's your response going to be? Oh, I lived a good life. I kept the Ten Commandments. I'm a follower of Buddha. I'm a follower of Jehovah. I'm a follower of Allah, da 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 or some other deity. Trust me. You can live a good life all you want, keep the Ten Commandments, and believe all these false deities. It won't help. None of those things will get you into heaven. And I'm here to tell you that there's only one way to heaven, and that's through accepting Christ as your Savior and allowing His precious shed blood to cover your sins. To let it atone, to pay, to cover and wash away your sins. Come to know Jesus. I pray, if there are any out there that do not know Jesus, that you come to know him now before it's too late. I'll tell you right now, there's no such thing as many paths or other ways to heaven. The belief that there's no God is a flat out lie. He certainly does exist. He is a just, holy, and righteous God. He hates sin, but you know, as I said before, he loves you. He sent his one and only son to die on the cross for you. And I'm challenging you. I'm inviting you right now to call on his name today. Seek his face. Ask him to come into your heart. He doesn't care what you've done, where you're from, anything about you. Just let him in. And when you do, he will He will cleanse you of your sin and forgive you. And he'll never remember those sins. I'm, at, I'm inviting you to experience that same joy. Please experience that same joy peace and more so make that decision to accept christ as your savior today let him set you free i have a link here that i'm going to post that you can click on if you want if you want to come to know christ but if, if let's say you want to do that right now i just I just challenge you in this to pray this and mean it with all your heart. Dear God, I know that I am a sinner. I know that because of my sin, I am separated from you and if I were to die right now, I wouldn't be in your, I wouldn't be in heaven with you. I would be separated from you in hell. But I hear 
I just heard that you sent your son to die on the cross for me. As a living sacrifice, as the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And you did that to do, for me. You sent your son for me. And, and I am here right now confessing that I am a sinner, that I, that I deserve this judgment. But I accept that gift through the death of your son, Jesus. And I choose to accept you, Jesus, right now into my heart and to save me from my sins. Wash them away with your precious blood. Cleanse me. Make me whole. And make me part of your family. Make me your child. Thank you for this gift. Thank you for the, the, the freedom I have now from sin. And that you never remember them. And thank you for the eternal life that I now have in you. And I choose to serve you for as long as I live as you will let me. If you've prayed that and you meant it with all your heart, you followed, you clicked on this link and you followed what it said, and you meant it with your heart, I welcome you to the family of God. And if you've chosen to take that step, let me know or uh, contact you know, the, the people from that the link. Allow me to help point you in the right direction so you can begin your new life in him. But before I close, I want to issue a very huge challenge to my brothers and sisters in Christ. I've got a really important question to ask. I posted this earlier this morning, and I'm asking this of you now. How might you be part of getting the good news of salvation to people, whether it's in your neighborhood, in your town, in your county, state, and or around the world? Pure and simple and short, what are you doing to proclaim and share the name of Jesus? What are you doing to share the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world? I am challenging you right now to not just ask yourself this, but seek God's face as to how you can be used of him every, every day this week. Go to the Lord this week. Ask him for ways in which he can use you to share the gospel. Write down the ways in which he, he, he inspires you to be able to serve God and others and get involved. And most of all, don't be afraid to follow the motto of Nike and just do it. Just do it for the Lord. I have to get going. Uh, got kind of a pretty big evening here. Uh, of all the ironies, there's another WWE pay-per-view. And also, uh, as a, speaking of which, in the WWE realm... Uh, another wrestler passed away, uh, Chavo Guerrero Sr., who happened to be the late Eddie Guerrero's brother. He passed away at 68 of liver cancer, and, and I, I really feel bad for his son, Chavo Jr. But what I do know is that the family, the whole family is, was saved and, lo saved and they love the Lord, and Chavo Sr. was also a man that loved, was saved and loved the Lord, just like his brother Eddie. And I, I'm asking, please pray for this family right now. I know what they're going through because of having lost my daddy. And I'll be honest, it hurts. But you know what? I rest in the knowledge. I praise God for the fact that I know I will see my dad again. But I know I'm here right now and I have a responsibility and I want to honor it. And I challenge you to honor it. You guys have a wonderful evening, and if any of you are planning on watching the Elimination Chamber tonight, I, I hope you have a lot of fun. Bye for now.